it to the assertion is an inhabited type. Ah, okay, so there's a nice, another way to think about it is there's a conceptual economy. All sorts of seemingly disparate things collapse down to one thing, okay? And that's, uh, that's good, right? That's always good. All right, other, other questions? <coughs> okay, what time am I supposed to go to? Now. Now? <laughs> Yes, am I, uh, am I, is this is pretty much my slot? Okay. <coughs> then um, let me, uh, let me, I want to leave us at a decent resting point. This is not, so, this is not bad, okay? The other thing, as a resting point, the other thing I want to say, though, about it is this, okay? So that's the first general setup. Now comes the next question, which is to revisit this notion of equality and the, in particular the idea of equality of reference. Because what do I want to say, what I want to get to is, And this is a, a kind of example I'm going to give you is a, a very famous one, okay, that has come up many times because every naive language designer comes up with this idea and then like falls flat in his face, okay? But here's the, here's the idea. You can think of this as uh, some people, there are various ways to write it. We can say, whoops, let me leave myself some room. The idea is that we can look at the type may be zero dot dot x is going to be a type. And that's supposed to be thought of as, you're supposed to, the idea is it's supposed to be, you know, zero, one, two, up to, let us say, x minus one, something like that. Okay, or x, I don't, I don't care really, whatever you want to do. Okay. <coughs> I'm, just, I'm just picking one of many examples out. Okay. So people have, uh, have tried to do this, okay? These are sometimes called subrange types or various things like this. So the critical idea is that, or you can think of it as a predicate. You can think of this as expressing the predicate that, uh, the, that uh, you're expressing a predicate. You can think of this as a predicate in, in, in Y that says, well, given Y and N, it's the idea that Y lies between zero and X, let's say if I did it like that in N. That's equivalently what it's expressing, okay? And this is uh, for some fixed X, okay? All right, that's a way of thinking about it. So that's supposed to be, uh, be a type. Okay, so here is the, the kind of thing that, that people run afoul of. And the question is, suppose I have now X and Y in N and I want to say something about the relationship between the type zero to x plus y versus, I'll just write versus, the type zero to y plus x. And what is the, relation, what is the relationship between them? Okay, because this is a type on this base, assuming I had plus around and stuff like that, like I usually do, and this is a type. Really writing zero dot is just like a nicety. I, I could have called this up two of x if you want. Okay, but anyway, a lot of times people will write it in this notation, right? It's just a, a way of presenting it, okay? The question is, are these the same type or are these different type or what's the relationship between them? This ends up being incredibly annoying, okay? It becomes a really a major problem. The reason is, is that we talked about before, x plus y is not definitionally equal to y plus x in the setup that I gave you. It's not a definitional equality. It's in fact a propositional equality. That is, this has to be proved by induction. So this has, so this is not true. This is true, but it requires an induction. It needs evidence. And the evidence is going to influence what is the relationship between these two types. And so that is a critical question, distinguishing what are called intentional versus extensional type theory which I'm going to explain, I guess I will explain ne next time. So this will serve as a tantalizer for you since I'm at the, at the end. So the issue I want to get at is once you have families of types, then you have the idea that terms make their way into types via the substitution principle and that those families should be functional, that is they should respect definitional equality certainly. The question is should they respect other forms of equality like a referential, a de denotational equivalence? These are the same mapping, so maybe these two types should be equal, right? Why not? Maybe they should be equal as types. 
And if they were equal as types, that would be pretty, pretty damn convenient because any time you had an element of this type, then you'd have an element of this type as well and it would be all like nice and easy and very simple. But it's a little stickier than all that and I'll, start to, I'll explain that next time. So that'll be, that'll be tomorrow. I'll start talking about this. So right now I'll leave it as a puzzle for you to think about, okay? Is how to handle this kind of a situation and how it's going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to generalize the idea of functionality to the idea of functoriality. And uh, that will uh, uh, give us some idea of what we're going to do here. So, all right, so that's, uh, that's what I want to say right now. So let's, uh, let's stop there. <laughs>